Hey guys, Ilya here. Today I'm gonna show you what plugin script is and how to use it. And basically this is a tool that can help you develop your uh, VST AAX audio units plugins. This is very simple comparing to how these uh, plugins are usually made using different C++ frameworks like Juice, like iPlug and some others. You don't have to learn how to build C++ DLLs and all the complex stuff about IDE, about all the compiler, linker settings. It all is really difficult if you have never had any experience with C++. And uh, here comes plugin script. This is an amazing tool for people who want to try to make something working with audio, to try the algorithms quickly and easily. And the best thing is that it's really programming and you can really make standalone plugin with it that will work in any DAW. You can sell it, you can send it to a friend. It doesn't require plugin script to be installed on user's machine. So enough talking, let's try to figure out how to use it. If you have not yet installed plugin script, you can download the demo from the Bluecat Audio site. It doesn't matter which you install. I prefer Windows X64 VST3 because VST3 supports uh, resizing the skin in Cubase and also VST3 supports side chaining. The demo version has some limitations that are mentioned here, but they are not that crucial and you can try it and see if it works for you. If you like this plugin, and I really like this plugin, I have spent almost two years using it already and it took a lot of my time. If you buy this plugin, you'll receive your link to download it. Sometimes there are sales, but still this plugin is so much. It can do so many things so exciting that you can make plugins, you can try so many things with it. You install it as any regular plugin. This is the default skin and there are several factory presets that you can try. You see there are many of them. If you are going to use them just for your music project, you can use the binary versions, which are uh, compiled versions. They will run faster. But if you want to edit these scripts, you may choose the regular versions and you can click on this edit mode button. Here you see the edition pane. And if you click on this edit script button, you will open the script in your text editor. You can choose which text editor to choose for editing, clicking here. I'm using Sublime Text, it's really nice. If you try to edit and save the script right now, it probably won't work because the default factory scripts are located in the read-only location. So you first have to save them to the location that you can write. Save script as. By default, they are saved into this users, documents, Bluecat Audio, Bluecat plugin scripts, scripts. Okay, this is a good location. Let's save it as my fuzz. Okay, we saved it and the script failed to initialize. Why? Probably because the script has some includes in it. Yes, it has includes. You see the library files are right here. Uh, you can either edit the path, just make it like this, save it, reload, click on reload, and you see everything is fine. Or you can just save the script not to this directly folder, just create here a folder, and you then would be fine with this includes. After you edit the script, you can click on this reload button and you will see the changes here. Let's try to change the parameter names. Let's make it not gain, but volume. Okay, save, reload, you see it changes. We can of course start with this uh, distortion script, but let's make something very basic and very simple at first. We all have to learn how to change the volume of the signal. So there is a script here called gain. You see the script is quite simple, but let's try to write it from scratch and explain every line in it. If you want to start a new script from scratch, you can choose the default script 
and then save script as let's call it my gain okay so we click edit script and this is the script let's give it a name we can give it a description you will see it here if you mouse over let's try our first processing function the easiest way to write an audio fx is to use the process sample function which gets an array of double values array by reference and these are the samples void means that this function doesn't return any value this is a C++ style of writing a function usually in other languages we write function process sample this is more like a procedure uh, there is something in other languages called procedure here we just write like this then it receives an array of doubles double is a number a floating point value integers are like numbers like one two three etc and floating point values like float is something like 3.14 blah 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 blah, blah etc and doubles are just like floats but they are twice uh, as high in precision float takes four bytes or bytes or 32 bits yeah and double takes twice as much memory 8 bytes or 64 bits so it receives audio in 64-bit format of course it depends on the DAW and on the plugin format you're using but if the plugin format and the DAW supports 64-bit audio we will process it like that array we receive is received by reference it means that we will be updating the original array not the copy of the array if we will have it like this we can read these values and modify them but they will not be modified in the original array okay we receive audio as a sequence of samples in values from 1 to minus 1 here you can see the representation these are different sample values as you see it in the DAW, this is the maximum uh, amplitude of the signal before clipping. So usually we get some values like 0 0.7, minus 0 0.6, etc. Uh, by the way, this is an article on the site about plugin script. Uh, you can check it out. This is exactly about what we are doing right now. So we receive these samples and we can modify them in this array in index 0 we will receive values for left channel index 1 values for right channel and so if we modify it we will modify our audio for example here we can just copy and paste it here let's save and reload let's put some audio in you see the input is almost equal in level both left and right channel and the output left channel is lower because we have just made it quieter in decibels this is minus six decibels approximately if we want to modify the right channel as well we can write it like this this is for the right channel we can write it a bit more short and a bit more efficient if we write it like this this is the same as before just shorter and you see this works only on stereo only for stereo channels right now there is a way we can make it work for all channel configurations if we just use a loop like this we have a variable called audio inputs count it holds the number of audio inputs we have right now on the track we can by the way check it out if we just make it print print usually wants us to have a string so let's call it audio input counts let's refresh you see audio input counts is two okay by the way when you print from here you also can click it and see the log because everything you print is saved to a log i did a, a terrible thing 
I used print inside process sample function, so every sample I write a line to a log. This is not a very good idea, basically, because we can get a huge log easily. Now this loop will pass through all the available input counts, and every channel is multiplied by 0.5, so it gets lower in amplitude. What we can do further is to add an input knob just to control our gain. 